Okay, I'm a Lebanese tattoo artist. I have a studio in Lebanon, Beirut, Lebanon. It's where I was born and raised. At, uh, basically, I'm a graphic designer. Uh, when I start uh, my uh, university, I start tattooing uh, my friend. And six years ago, I took my decision to start tattooing like a fully time job. So I got some courses, tattoo courses with, uh, with uh, a lot of artists. And uh, that's how I opened my tattoo studio in Lebanon, Beirut, Lebanon. And I started going for conventions and uh, guest spotting. So every client, when they give me their story behind the tattoo, even if they have a story, some people, they do the tattoo just for fun and I can appreciate that too. So uh, I got inspired from my clients, to be honest. From each client, I get uh, a talk with them. I get like uh, closer to them with their story, with the, with the story behind the tattoo. So that's how I got inspired. <laughs> Well, when I studied uh, art at the university, so it's where I started to to tattoo. It is like, um, well, I was thinking about that like an, another um, style, so like painting, oil painting or uh, watercolor, so like another uh, technique. So, and well, I like it always uh, about tattoos, but it wasn't till the university uh, when I thought that I maybe could start uh, doing. Um, for me, my favorite uh, technique was always uh, oil painting. I remember that when I uh, started, when, when my teacher, my paint teacher, uh, uh, told me that I could um, begin to paint uh, like an oil painting I, I couldn't sleep because I was so excited I I, I love this now uh, so I think the oil painting it is very similar as the technique that I use when I'm tattooing it is like well of course it is different because uh, uh, it is on skin it's movement every skin is different but but it is very similar so uh, the colors that I use, uh, I think it is very similar to oil painting. So it is quite inspired on this technique. And then about themes, as I told, nature or fantasy, I love portraits, um, anonymous portraits and animals of everything. I think, I think that would be the most uh, near of the of the Thames. Hmm. About 30 years ago, I started doing logos and album covers for, for black metal bands like uh, Immortal and Bursum and Slaved, uh, Satyricon and a lot of different things. And I've continued still making some logos and, uh, and uh, album covers, but not as many anymore. And I was also 30 years ago working as a bouncer for uh, a rock pub in Bergen. And the only tattooer in town, he uh, he just opened up his studio and he came over and he asked me if I'd done the, I think it was the Immortal logo. And he asked me if I could do some drawings that he like flashed for his wall. So I did that and he paid me in tattoos. It was a perfect trade. Then I became his apprentice after a while. So I've been tattooing now for 27 years. When I started, uh, I tried to be a potato that's usable for anything. 
Um, so I did color work and portraits and everything. But uh, at some point, because I've always liked black and gray most, uh, quite dark black and gray. And at some point, somebody wanted a wood carving tattoo, like a traditional Norwegian culture kind of style wood carving. So I did that. And then same month, another guy came and, and also wanted a wood carving tattoo. And then one guy in the end came and wanted both sleeves wood carving from uh, the Hilestad portal, which is a stave church in Norway. And they have like ornaments around the door and it's really beautiful. Um, so I did that. And he went on Pinterest and showed off his tattoos. And I owe him a lot because I really love that way of working. And it's supposed to look like old wood and cracked and sometimes with like little uh, like holes in it, as you see in old wood. So if I, if I do the lines too correctly, it doesn't look nice when I'm done with it. So, but also it, it, I try to make uh, parts of the body look like it's carved in wood. So a full sleeve would, for me would look hopefully like a log with patterns on it. <laughs> I started to tattoo in, in uh, uh, 2012 uh, after my, my, my study on the Academy of Fine Art in uh, scenography, scenographic. And um, after uh, the, my, my study, I, I started to tattooing for a joke, but I fall in love uh, immediately. And I started to study for uh, this art with uh, a lot of course, a lot of uh, uh, seminaries, and I found a good studio to start uh, in the past and uh, start my career in, uh, in, the, in this way. <laughs> For me, the tattoo is a, a new form of art, not like the um, past art that there is a, a, like a painting in a home, but uh, real art that uh, the people wear on your skin and life every day. And uh, it's a very personal type of art. Mine, it's a very colorful style, inspired by the cartoons, uh, Japanese cartoon in particular, the, hero, the family heroine in uh, like Sailor Moon or the Disney's princess, it's my, my principal uh, inspiration uh, in all of the, the words of the um, fantasy or uh, the comics uh, I love. Cancellation, my imagination, just trying to be all alone. Uh oh, 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 uh
they were like, you know what, that's not real art. You know, it's not modern art. You should forget about that. That's, that's you know, it's nothing. And I was like, what, what, what do you mean it's nothing? I, I just loved making tattoo designs. And um, I was like, you know what? I'm quitting art school instead. And I'm, I'm gonna dive into this tattoo world. So um, I, I grew up as an all-round tattooer, basically just taking on any kind of job and challenge, like from simple things to look flowers and cover-ups and tribal and Maori and whatever. I just took everything. But nowadays I'm starting to like create my own sort of styles and just make more designs that I like and trying to see if anybody is interested and uh, this way I've started to I've, I come up with like this uh, like stained glass sort of style and uh, I just it's really fun to make and I really really enjoying it some people seem to really like them as well so it's it's really getting popular and people are now asking uh, for th for this type of style more and more so that's that's how you specialize I suppose you know just make what you love and uh, others will love it, and you get to create them more and more. This is, um, yeah, it's awesome. <laughs>been an artist always I've never done anything else um, I went to art school I didn't have the best time I did I don't know I didn't really maybe I didn't I made the wrong choices but I, I did a little bit of graphics a little bit of sculpture a little bit of painting um, some animation some digital work some performance work and I came out of art school with a pretty unclear idea of what I was gonna do and I fell into being a circus performer, burlesque and circus performer. And I did that for ten, about 10 years. There's a bit of crossover. Um, but yeah, I worked as a performer for a long time. And then after a while, I, you know, I came around to thinking that I wanted to paint and draw again. Because that's my ultimate passion is, is drawing and painting and you know, live performance and physical performance has a shelf life, so. So it started in a slightly, a sort of accident, not accidental way, but I was working in a studio in London. I left and the owner of the studio said, oh, do you want to open a studio with me? And I, I was quite naive. I just kind of said, yes, let's go. And uh, I, I wanted it to be all female. So really, you know, yes, we live in a world where there is more equality, but there is still a need, I think, to create a female space where women can feel comfortable. Like, it doesn't matter what you wear when you come into work, you know, you can wear tiny shorts like me, or you can come in like dressed down, no one's gonna comment, no one's ever gonna try and chat up the girls that work in my studio, you know? They're never gonna feel unsafe because they have all these women behind them to back them up. And the same with the customers. And I'm not, I don't just mean female customers. We get a lot of male customers who are very happy to be in a space which is free from sort of toxic masculinity, where they feel more looked after or like they're not gonna have to come up against some kind of macho bullshit, you know? yeah for sure now the tattoos is like uh, the new trend the new like uh, people that are accepting tattoos like way more than other uh, uh, than before and for sure in my country you know that lebanon is in the middle east so before it was like a taboo like everyone like uh, oh this guy have a tattoos look at his face look at his arms now that everyone is getting tattoos and um, so with time it's getting like easier for us to see people with tattoos to appreciate this uh, type of art 
and you can see that uh, with this culture now and with this uh, time, you can see a lot of kids going with a convention with their family. So it's uh, getting way better to introduce it to uh, kids. So uh, that's why I feel and with time it's getting better and better and easier for us. <laughs> 30 years ago we, ha we had a war, so in the war there's uh, only the gangsters and uh, people like that having tattoos. That's why uh, like 10 years ago, I think, I think maybe 6 years ago, uh, this image changed. And it changed a lot uh, even through its time when uh, people are using the tattoo to cover the scars. And uh, they are like finding like a new things to do it with it. So for them it's... Um, getting like uh, more like uh, um, helping people to feel better with their body even the people that have a lot of scars yeah it's getting there i think um there's such a huge difference in in well in really badly done tattoos and good tattoos are amazingly beautiful and it's it's really getting recognized i think but it depends on where you are in the world. I mean, some places, you know, everybody will still say it's for criminals and look down upon you and other places it's it's a good art form. Norway has come far. They don't, you don't really lose your job anymore or any of those things that, that it used to be. But it goes in circles. When I started in the 90s, um, visible tattoos would stop you from getting a, a job um, and you would get bad service in the stores. But especially in the States, I think it turned around a lot. Uh, at some point, if you went into a store with good tattoos, you'd get better service because they would, you know, they would instinctively know that if you have money to use on a good tattoo artist and you get good work done, you also have money to use in the store. So I guess that was part of turning it. And all these discovery um, programs with, with um, Miami Ink and all these also made it okay to start with a big tattoo. You don't really just have to start with a barbed wire anymore. It's really developing into more of a fine arts, you know? It, it used to be just a, you know, little, little drawn traditional thick lines, three colors. And nowadays it is expanding and growing into, it, it's exploding into, all kinds of styles and it can go from abstract to surrealistic and it's it's so wide and it's growing so fast it's, it's beautiful you know it's no longer the simple sailor anchor tattoo or or mom with a heart uh, but <laughs> it's um, it's growing to insane lengths of artistic uh, like artistry and that's it's amazing to see how big it's getting and how complex, you know, how beautiful people are making uh, tattoos is, is insane. So, yeah, it's, it's amazing to be in it in this time, you know, not 50 years ago. <laughs> I probably would have been making hearts with mom on it as well 50 years ago. I think it's, I think it's improving. But uh, I have bizarre conversations with people, you know, in a bar or whatever, and they're like, oh, you know, um, they, they say, okay, so, so do you know how to draw? And I'm like, oh. <laughs> like, it's like they don't understand that the two are connected or my mom, bless her, said, it looks almost like a drawing. <laughs> and I was like, it is a drawing. <laughs> so... But I think there is a, a stigma attached to it or people don't understand. People still I, I think I copy something or they think I copy something that someone else has created, like I'm a printer. And I don't think it's changing though because so many more people have tattoos now and it's much more accessible. We have Instagram, people can go and check out loads of different artists. They can watch artists making their work, you know, from start to finish. So the whole process is kind of unveiled and it's not so much of a mystery and the kind of shops where you go in and you pick off like on the wall like I want this dragon and they just do it is is kind of falling into history you know so I think it's changing but it's got a little way to go yet um yeah so 
depending also of the people who looks it because um, in my experience I saw that it is very different and um, for example in places where government um, invest uh, money in art so this kind of people normally are um, uh, more used to see tattoos as an art and they are more open to get tattoos and they they see us yes like like an, another technique or like if you buy um, a picture and uh, for your home so they really uh, like it and in another countries or places where maybe people doesn't uh, be used to to think about the tattoo like an art um, well it is uh, different no so maybe before uh, people saw uh, tattoos like um, something for bad people or you know so not not the best persons but now it is uh, uh, many different so now in the places where people have um, an um, education about art uh, they see it like uh, another um, quality so they see it very very well and many people ask for getting tattoos and many people like to see it so like for example here in conventions hmm. It's a very tricky question because it means so much different to every person who gets the tattoo. Um, for me it's a uh, kind of taking ownership of your body and making it look like you want it to look. And it's also a really great picture book or memory book from your life because what you got when you were 18, you, you probably wouldn't get it today, most likely. But it, it reminds you about where you were when you were 18 and, and where your mind were when you were 18. And I think it's really nice you have those things. And of course, if you were in a dark hole when you were 20 and got this tattoo, you can cover it up. You know, that's no problem. But most of them stay, so... But I think the answer to, to what they mean is as many as for the person who, who gets them. I have a lot of uh, people, get, of course, getting the names of their kids, which I really, really love to do. And to put, you know, some runes have um, different meanings, that they're not just letters, but they can mean protection or family or love or gift or... Mm -hmm or uh, art or whatever, and it's nice to, to add those runes if they get something concerning their kids and such. I love every tattoo that I made because I think that when I made this tattoo, I, uh, I take the, the, the maximum uh, from my possibility, but uh, more than, uh, over the time, I see that uh, I like this, and after two weeks I love this and after two weeks I love more this and so I don't know what my favorite it's on this wall <laughs> for me every tattoo is special because have an important meaning for the people that wear but for me every tattoo is important not every meaning when I made the tattoo I know every meaning meanings but uh, I know that for a people it's uh, a tattoo, it's uh, a story, it's an uh, experience, uh, it's very important. For me, it's very important because, um, well, uh, every customer uh, that I have, uh, they will wear a tattoo from me forever, no? And for me, it's very, very important that somebody trusts me to get tattooed something uh, forever, no? So. Um, it could be that they always have a 
small piece uh, from me, no? When you uh, try to to do, so I try to do my best in every tattoo, and also I try to to put my heart. So it is something very very personal, no? Usually I don't tell the client how, what to do or what you want to do. Uh, people coming to the tattoo artist, they, we don't know them. So, uh, for example, you're a client, you come to me, you give me your story, your style, uh, the spot that you want, the size that you want, and I can collaborate with you to do a, like a piece of art that is good for you and I'll be proud of it. I'll be proud of it as a tattoo artist, as a healing, uh, things like that but you're gonna having having it for uh, on your skin for a lifetime so you should like uh, have your own story for each tattoo i started breast working with a breast ca cancer patient like three years ago or maybe four because uh, i'm lost with the number of the years because of the covid so i started working with a breast cancer cancer it was like uh, something uh, i feel like helping them it's uh, same as if I have something on my body I don't like and someone try to help me, I feel better. So I can feel them, the women. So my concept is to cover all the scars that I have because of the breast cancer with a tattoo. And uh, sometimes most of the women, they don't have a nipple tattoo, a nipple, nipple. So we do it as a tattoo and we do it as a 3D uh, tattoo. So you can see it like it's normal. So that can uh, that's made, make them feel way better than before. So it's so satisfying to see these women uh, looking at their body like uh, same way as before. For me, it's uh, it's an art. It's a particular art, the tattoo, because there is a lot of uh, face. For me, there is the artistical phase, the draw, the, the project, the preparation of the project, and the art, the execution of the tattoo, that there is a lot of uh, technique, uh, materials to know, and, uh, and the, the difficult to the people, to uh, rel relationship to the people, because uh, uh, I say that the tattoo is uh, not my product, but a product, uh, a product that uh, we made uh, together with my customer. That is, it's a beautiful relation because, um, yeah, the client comes with an idea and like pure trust in you to take the idea and like really sense what they like desire and what they love and aesthetically, but also almost spiritually. And uh, it's, it's such a beautiful connection you make in that tattoo, you know? It's their, their, their feelings or their story is in, in the design you make, you translate it for them. That is, that is uh, some, like, almost magical. And it's, uh, it's very special that people trust you, of course, with their body forever. Like it's a permanence and um, yeah, I really like respect that and honor that as well. Like it's amazing, you know, that they allow you to tattoo them and translate their life, like ideas or stories or like the feelings of the heart or whatever. It's, it's, it's yeah, it's almost undescribable. It's really beautiful, so. I think that depends on the artist. <laughs> I think that depends on the artist. There's a vast spectrum of attitudes, okay? You know, some people, they take an attitude, like I'm always right, you know, the customer is not right, I'm gonna do what I wanna do, which is kind of right and wrong. Like, it's a collaboration. For me, it's a collaboration, but ultimately I know best in the sense that I've I've been doing this day every day for 10 years, you know. So as much as I want to work with people, if they say, oh, I want this, sometimes, you know, you have to be a bit strict and say, well, that's not going to look good, you know. And uh, the ideal is you collaborate and then they just let you, they let you go and they let you do your thing. Um, but certainly for me, I, I enjoy my customer's input.
from the beginning. You know, I don't want to be an arrogant artist who just says, okay, you know, keep quiet. I know what I'm doing. Um, I also need their input because I don't have an imagination. So <laughs> I need them to come with their weird ideas. And I'm like, okay.